tiempo ha sido la vida de una población marginal.
Today is a special day. Today is Citizenship Day. And on this Citizenship Day, I want to congratulate every American who became a citizen this year, especially this year. So I am so excited to be celebrating Citizenship Day. Woo! Congratulations, congratulations and welcome. And also congratulations, since this will be the first year that you can vote. Every citizen has their own story to tell, and your bravery and courage in making America your new home makes me so very proud to be a citizen alongside you. As a longtime naturalized citizen of this country, I welcome you to being an American citizen of the United States. Citizenship Day is personal for me as I myself just became a naturalized citizen this year. In my family, my parents and my sister all emigrated from India, so they all became citizens after I did. Although I grew up in this country, my parents did make it very clear how different it was for them and how the transition wasn't easy. But trust me when I say that this great country is nothing without its immigrants and the cultures from around the world. I still remember the first day I came to the United States. I am the child of an immigrant. Um, a great deal of the people in my life are immigrants. And I just want to say, regardless of status, I am so happy that you're here. One of my earliest memories is going to see my parents and my brother's naturalization ceremony as a four-year-old. And they gave me a little flag and I felt all of the feels and I cheered. And even then, as a kid, I knew it was a big deal. Being an American citizen, gives you a lot of power. It gives you the right to have your voice heard, the right to vote. This year, it's a more important election than ever before. That's why it's very important that if you can, you register to vote. If this is your first election that you're voting in as an American citizen, oh 
my goodness, you picked a doozy. I want to tell you that your vote matters. The past few years have cluttered the path to citizenship with obstacles, including the rising cost of application fees from $600 to over $1,200, not to mention how complicated the steps have become. And I urge you to do your civic duty and remember to vote in this election, not only for the highest office, but for every office that affects your town, your community, your state, and all of us Americans. I mean, it really is such a special vote because you earned it, man. You earned it. One of the most powerful days of my life was the first time I walked in the polling booth and voted as an American citizen. If you vote by absentee ballot, request your ballot now. Vote early, but just vote. You just won the right to do it. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Bienvenidos. Please visit newamericaneconomy.org slash citizenship day to learn how you can support immigrants on their road to citizenship. Oh, my friends, this is a big one. Welcome. Hello and welcome. First, I'd like to congratulate all the new American citizens. We're so pleased to welcome you. And thank you to everyone for joining us tonight for a very special edition of Art is Easy. Now for a long list of thank yous because I'm a well of bottomless gratitude. Thank you to everyone that lent their voice for the opening video. Thank you to the Apron Center and most of all to Lorelai and Charlie for creating such a fun evening and for celebrating Citizenship Day with us. Tonight wouldn't be possible without the generosity of Julio Torres, Bowen Yang, and Karen Chi. So thank you everyone. Soon you'll hear from the Immigrant Legal Resource Center about why it's critical that we support immigrants trying to naturalize. It's harder than ever to become a U.S. citizen, and many who applied with the hope that they would be able to vote in the upcoming election may not be able to do so. But first, I'm here to tell you a little bit about New American Economy and what we're doing to support immigrant communities around the U.S. Back in March, we had no idea what to expect from COVID-19, but now it's clear. This pandemic has intensified the existing structural inequalities in our country, and now that it's so painfully obvious what's broken, we have a responsibility and an opportunity to do the work to fix it. NAE is positioned to meet this moment. For over a decade, we've been working at the state and local level to address these inequalities for both immigrants and refugees. Our state and local team works across the country, bringing local leaders to the table and forming commitments to tangible, meaningful policy change. For example, since education is top of mind for many right now, we've helped Texas keep in-state tuition for DREAMers, and supported the successful fight to expand in-state tuition to DACA students in Arkansas. And during the COVID crisis, we've worked with governors and state legislatures to make it easier for immigrants with healthcare and other essential work training to gain licenses to work in the U.S. We know there's work ahead to fight for the safety of immigrants and all Americans, but today we ask you to share in a moment of joy for all the new citizens we've welcomed this past year. There's nothing more powerful than a sense of community to give us hope that things can and will change for the better. Once again, a huge thank you to all the creatives who are lending their talents to this cause. We appreciate you so very much. And now I'd like to turn it over to Melissa Rogers from the Immigrant Legal Resource Center. Please take a moment to donate if you can. The URL is scrolling right at the bottom of your screen. Thank you and don't forget to vote. Hello, my name is Melissa Rogers. I'm Director of Programs at the Immigrant Legal Resource Center and director of the New Americans Campaign, or NAC. I'm really delighted to be here with you tonight. The NAC is a national campaign aimed at increasing the number of new Americans by helping green card holders through the legal process of becoming US citizens. We're also the largest collaboration working on naturalization in the history of the United States, with over 200 organizations working coast to coast in over 20 cities. Together, we've helped 475,000 people. But we have more work to do. Of the 9 million people eligible to apply for US citizenship, fewer than 1 million naturalize each year. Our goal is to ensure that every eligible applicant can achieve their dream of US citizenship. And once they become citizens, they can vote and they are secure in their status here. Next month, the Trump administration is imposing this nation's first ever wealth test on US citizenship, raising the application fee to be over $1,000 and eliminating fee waivers for low-income applicants. 
Together, these changes mean that millions of immigrants and their families won't be able to afford the cost of becoming U.S. citizens. We should not have a wealth test on U.S. citizenship. This is more than an attack on immigration. It's also an attack on what makes the United States special and unique among all countries in the world. The work that the New Americans campaign does is one straightforward solution to the problem. We thank New American Economy and the Abrams Art Center for organizing this event. Happy Citizenship Day, everyone. Hi, my name is Ali Rosa Salas, and I'm the director of programming at Abrams Art Center. Abrams is a multidisciplinary arts venue on Manhattan's Lower East Side, and we operate as part of Henry Street Settlement, which is a social services agency that provides education, housing, and health and wellness services to New Yorkers. The Lower East Side plays a really important role in the history of immigration in what we now call the United States. Beginning in the 19th century, people from across the world came to this neighborhood with hopes of securing a better life for themselves and their families. Our organization, Henry Street Settlement, was founded to provide quality health care, education, employment, and creative space when systemic xenophobia rendered access to such services a privilege rather than a human right. Almost 130 years later, this commitment continues, and we're so grateful for partnerships with organizations like the New American Economy, whose advocacy for immigrants is critical for our collective survival. Though all of us are tuning in tonight from around the city, country, and world, I would like for us to begin by honoring the indigenous ancestral homelands in which we all reside. Abrams Art Center is located on the island of Manhattan in Lenape Hoke, which is the ancestral homelands of the Lenape people. We pay respects to Lenape people's past, present, and future, and are committed to doing our part to rectify the colonial violences that resulted in their forced displacement. We also acknowledge the instrumental role that New York played in the transatlantic slave trade and in the lasting violences of white supremacy in our city. And we are committed to directing resources to support the work of black artists and organizers in New York City and beyond. We hope that through programs like Art is Easy, you will do your part to actively support the liberation work of indigenous, immigrant, and black peoples in the communities in which you live. So on behalf of the Abrams family, welcome to Art is Easy, the first program of the Abrams Art Center's Fall 2020 season which is a Citizenship Day celebration presented in partnership with the New American Economy. We hope you also join us for the rest of the fall season as well. So visit our website at abramsartcenter.org for more. And without further ado, take it away, Lorelai. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. It is me. Lorelai Ramirez, Lorelai Wormy Ramirez, as you can see on the screen, I made up the name Wormy during quarantine because I was going insane. And that's also why I have a plant on my face. So I just want to let you know, things are not going well. Just kidding. Things are going extremely well. I'm so happy to be here and I'm so thankful to Abrams Art Center for featuring Art is Easy. Now, here are some important rules, okay? In the chat room, there is Charlie, who is our co-host. Say hello, Charlie. And let's bring Charlie up on screen. So Charlie, consider this a game, if you will, okay? So you're gonna tell Charlie everything you feel, everything you want to see on the screen, what should be drawn, and Charlie will communicate that to me and we'll take it from there. Kind of like an Andy Richter, you know? I, that's like the only co-host that I know. I'm, I love you so much, Wormy. Yes, Charlie. I had to get out of, did you see how, had to get out of my, do you see how I was hiding and then I had to get out of my plant kingdom? Do you see how I was being Wormy? Did you see that? That I was like, just kind of like slithering on the ground and when I had to like, and then I had to kind of like come up to worm it out. Well, anyway, I'm so happy to see you all. Let's look at the comments and make sure to comment, okay? This is nothing without you guys. You guys are the things that keep this alive. Uh, we do have guests. Um, we have Charlie in the chat. What else do I want to say? At the end of the show, we will make a special one-of-a-kind t-shirt and you will buy it, okay? You must, I learned this on The Vow. Have you guys been watching The Vow? Just buy it. 
You will buy it. You will buy it. Um, basically brainwashing. Okay. So you should watch The Vow on HBO. Everyone's talking about it. Um, so what do I want to say? What is art is easy? You must be like, what the bleep is going on? I don't even know if I can curse here, but what the bleep is going on? And here I am to tell you, hello, welcome to Art is Easy. Art is Easy is a show where we draw, we use drawing as a tool of manifestation and we manifest the futures we want to see. Um, so this time we are addressing citizenship. Um, and Art is Easy because we make it together. Yes, Charlie. Charlie, yeah, Charlie says, yes, please share your thoughts and feelings. Um, I'm gonna try my best to keep this together don't know if it will happen, um, but I will try my best. Um, please, throughout the show, donate to New American Economy and let us know in the chat how much you donated and we'll give you a shout out and maybe we'll even draw you in the, fo the photo, the picture, the draw, the painting. I still got it, look at this, I'm still on stage. This is a new thing I'll bring to the stage once I'm back. Can you imagine me on stage just kind of like, hey, hi, everybody, how you doing? And I start talking, instead of Jeff Dunham, it's just my hand, but I'm really good at it. All right, so let's move on because there's <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to do. Everybody should see the, the vow. What is Art is Easy? Art is Easy is a show where we draw. Basically, you tell me what to draw. I draw it. And the theme is, can we put the theme down here? Citizenship. What do you think about citizenship? What do you feel about citizenship? What does it mean to you? You know, I was thinking about this recently, actually. Thank you for pulling up the question because now I'm reminded of what I was thinking. So here's what I was thinking about citizenship. I was thinking of like, I was thinking like, you know how everybody, like when you hear about, when somebody hears that you're an American, you're like, oh, it's so embarrassing. You know, as an American, you're like, ah, oh, shit, we're doing so much bad stuff. Ah, ah, our president. Ah, God, it's so annoying. It's so embarrassing. I know that I feel very embarrassed whenever I'm anywhere else. And anybody's like, are you American? And I'm like, no, no soy. Because I can pretend sometimes. Um, so I was thinking of like, oh, that thought that. American citizen citizenship is so bad should be reversed. You know, we should reverse this. And I was thinking about the good things about American citizenship. You know, I, I was thinking of like the the journey my parents have made just to for me to be here, for, for me to be able to have a life that has more access than them, which is completely true. And I was thinking of the great people in this country, and I was thinking of what else was I, was I thinking of? How we just need to reverse this shitty American culture thing. And we need to reclaim Americana, you know? Uh, so I've been really getting into uh, country music. Um, how about you guys? What, what do you think is good about American citizenship or citizen, like in this country? Like what's good about it? Let's focus on the good. And how can re we reshape the way that we see this, like being an American citizen. So let me know in the chat, our fam donated $20. Great Brittany, as a man, what do you want to see? Brittany, because you donated and you told us, how about you choose what our background is for today? So let's move on over to the Photoshop, where we will be drawing live. Here we go. All right, so here we go. So just quickly, I just want to say bonjour. Um, I had that prepared. It took about five days to create this piece of artwork. Um, I also want to say hola, welcome, bonjour, what's up, yo, hey, in all, all the different languages of saying uh, and saying hello. Um, so we want to start off with a background and we want our $20, our $20 person to give us, um, give us the, uh, the vibe. What's the vibe? What are we starting? Are we in a sunset? Are we, is it blue skies? What's going on here?
I'm gonna wait for you guys. So let me know, I'm gonna start off with a color while you guys get situated. I'm gonna use one of my favorite paint brushes, the oil. I swear to God sometimes, I'm sorry if for anybody that doesn't like swearing to God, I know my mom doesn't and I hope she's not watching. But if she is, I love her. I love you, mom. Um, so I'm gonna use this oil brush. You see that? Do you see the texture? I really don't know how they do it. This is amazing. So we're just gonna do a bluish kind of sky thing. We're gonna see how that goes. Shout out to the awesome ASL interpreter. Not a question, just a comment. Yes, of course. Shout out, thank you. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying thank you to me. I'm saying thank you for acknowledging that. And I'm happy that you appreciate it. And I also appreciate the ASL interpreter. All right, so here is our sky going on. But what's going in here? What's happening in here? And that's what we need you guys for. So let us know, what do you think about citizenship? And, but while you guys think about that, you know what? I'll just go ahead and bring up our first guest. Our first guest is one of my favorite comedians, okay? So nice, so funny. Writes for like every TV show. I don't know. I'm so bad with uh, details. Uh, not my forte. Stand up comedian, writer, has been featured in New Yorker, McSweeney's, on late night TV. Please give it up for one of my favorites, Karen T. Hey, where are you? How are you, Karen? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. And I just want to let everybody know that no comedian on the show uh, has any prepared material because we're all just kind of uh, doing quarantine as best we can. So how's your quarantine been, Karen? Um, my quarantine has been pretty, I'm like very grateful things are going pretty okay. Uh, basically, I actually, I'm, I'm in Korea right now because my Grandma got a little bit sick back in June, and so oh, no. I like flew over here and have been with my grandparents. My grandma's doing a lot better, which is like so nice and such a relief. And also, it was like I don't know if anybody else has been dealing with people who aren't doing well. Maybe this is true for you, Lorelai. But um, once she started getting better, I had this like full body relief. <gasps> oh my god! Have yeah. you been, has your body been holding on to tension this whole time? Like, yeah, I don't know. For me, I feel like I can't. There's no way to relax my bones at all. You know, no, I completely know what you mean. It's also, isn't it aggravating that you don't realize you've been holding on to tension until you let it go? Oh my god, that sucks. Yeah. You know, the other day, I, this is a really dark thought, though. Okay. Okay. So I hope I'm in a safe space. This is like completely public. Um. I was like trying to let go of some tension in my jaw at night and I was like, wait a minute, is like the total release death? And then I was like, oh no, like am I always, is living a tense thing? Like is it, is it yeah. like us, are we holding on to like our bones and our muscles too hard? I, I, I feel like, I feel like that's true, but I feel like sometimes tension is a really nice thing. You know what I mean? Because, like, don't you feel like right. when you're having a conversation with somebody, the moment where you're waiting for them to respond, you feel tension, but it's, like, a really delightful kind of tension? I mean, I, I don't think I experience the delight. <laughs> I think for me it's more like, oh, it's not going well. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I love the tension between you and this plant right now, for instance. Yeah, I mean, I think what's going on is really good because it's like yeah. whenever I feel uncomfortable, the plant's kind of carrying me through this whole thing, you know? It's really beautiful. It makes you look mysterious. I'm like dying to learn more about who you really are. Oh, yeah. Well, you'll never know. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah, so that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just came on to tell you that you'll never know. So, oh, Karen, what's your... I don't know, what do you think about citizenship? Like what, I don't know, it's such a crazy time in our country. Like I think from like hearing the intros of like people saying please vote, it's like 
yeah, we're scared of voting. Like Americans aren't proud of being American right now. American citizens kind of feel like the system has failed them. But I wonder, like, ways to ways to improve our our notions of being a citizen of any any country right now that's feels like really too corrupt to be a part of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's super fair. The thing you said about like feeling embarrassed to be American is so true. And also the wish to like change that is huge, right? I think something that brings me a lot of like hope and pride in being American is seeing how many other people are also as angry as I am, if not angrier about like controversies that are going on right now and like injustices and things and being like, oh, those people who are angry are Americans. And like, those are the people who are like, shifting the direction of the country in a way that I think is like morally good um and getting to feel yeah sorry go ahead I don't mean to cut you off I was I was gonna say that inspires me to draw an angry person oh I love it maybe we have this like angry person with their arms with their arms flailing up and this will be kind of the person we're following in our in our narrative so I'm gonna do this. Um, I don't know. Have you? Do you know about this? The beige color. The what color? Do you know about beige? As in the color? Wait. What do you mean? What about beige? Like you in mean art, for in art school? They teach you that in that using the color beige is like a kind of a universal skin color. Oh, I did not know that about art school, but I know that was like a huge thing with band aids recently. Yeah, which is nice to have like shades, but I'm also like, do I want to pay more money for shades? <laughs> you could wait. What are the basic colors that you get before you have to pay? Um, the basic colors that you get before you have to pay. What beige? <laughs> oh, just beige. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I'm like uh, beige. <laughs> I'm actually like a big supporter of the color beige. Yeah. You're like coming out in favor of everyone being beige. Yeah, I'm like, actually, the color yeah. beige is universal. <laughs> I do like it. I love it. I'm like, have you heard about I bring something up just so that I could defend it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Google and there's an Atlantic article that's like, have you heard about <laughs> that beige? I wrote, yeah. I wrote today. <laughs> you just keep quoting yourself in the article. You I wrote yourself? myself in other articles that I just wrote today. Yeah. Like everything's hyperlinked and it's like very <laughs> professional. It's like, when did you put this together? <laughs> oh my God. But I'm like really impressed because it's beautifully written. <laughs> Everything rhymes. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go in and, you know, what, can you tell me a little bit more about this angry person, even though you didn't make this up? And no, I love it. I love it so much. I like that the angry person has really long arms because I think that is good for both fighting and hugging. Um, I think they should have a lot of hair um, just because the more the merrier is a good concept for everything. Oh, that's beautiful. You like a big hair? No, that was great. I loved it. Are you sure not like a little bigger? Oh, you know what? That's also great too. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> now that's nice hair. It kind of looks like lungs. Ooh. Ooh. Me lungs. Yeah, lungs hair. Lungs hair. I like that There's too. some little veins. Oh, that's gorgeous. I feel like it should maybe have like a cute little belt on. Oh, yes. Wait, the veins look really spooky in a great way. Wait, should the belt be like cinched the waist or do we want like a loose belt? Like this would be like a loose belt. And then oh, I love the loose belt. Yeah, a loose belt? Okay. Yeah, a lo that looks really comfortable because then you're just wearing it like for fun. Yeah, then it, it, it's just like a style style thing. So yeah. what's, what kind of belt is this? I want to say it's beaded. Okay, it's beaded. Yeah. What's your favorite color? Is it beige? Um, yeah, I actually like the color, like, white a lot. <laughs> I actually, like, really love, and there's this, like, really cool music group, if you know about it, called the Proud Boys. <laughs> Imagine. I'm like, there's this really amazing, 
Joker, actually. His name is Jordan Peterson. He is awesome. <laughs> and there's like uh, Camille Pagli. Like there's all these great, <laughs> I just like truly suck. No, we should check and it's just like everyone has logged off this stream. <laughs> yeah, there's no comments. No, no, all the comments are like, I'm embarrassed to be here, but I'm proud yeah. to be American. <laughs> yeah, please don't, please don't tell anybody I was there. I don't know why I gave a clown nose. Somebody said, sorry, Coconut the Octopus said, didn't realize that you had to take a poo. Okay, that sounds good. We'll take from that. Let's see. Yeah. He stopped his bike next to a beautiful pink coral reef. The reef was based, bathed in ash. Ooh, okay. okay so we, I think we need some of that, too, going on. So, so citizenship for some people brings up a coral reef. So I'm mean, gonna, I guess, get this coral color, and then I also want to say, just so I don't overstay my welcome, in the chat it says I'm at seven minutes, but obviously, oh, okay. To oh right. my God, it's so fun talking to you, Karen. But <laughs> yeah, that doesn't mean we have to eliminate you. No, I'm no. <laughs> no, but really, thank you so much for coming out. You are one of my favorite comedians. When I hear anybody saying anything. <laughs> critical <laughs> i'm like get out of my face i love karen and love me. thank you i really love love your work i think you're so funny and i think you're a great performer and i can't wait to see you again when real life happens again i love you so much thank you for having me this is such a delightful show thank you for adding to the picture yeah. bye karen bye so that was karen chi everybody and now we have this angry person that Karen gave us, but now we need a background. Now we need a, are we in a city? Are we under the sea? Somebody said coral reef. Somebody said a bike. Let's bring up our next guest to tell us where we might be. Please give it up for co-creator of Los Spookies, amazing stand-up comedian, wrote on SNL. <laughs> and totally loved it, had the time of his life, couldn't stop talking about it. Please give it up for Julio Torres. Hi, Lorelai. Hi, Julio, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. So can you quickly just tell everybody um, how much you loved working on SNL? <laughs> And like seeing that through the lens of citizenship? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. Um, how are you? What's up? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I, I'm good. This is only my like third quarantine Zoom show. Thank, I'm, I'm so honored for you doing this because I actually don't do any quarantine shows at all because I'm too sad all the time. So it means a lot to me that you're here. Well, I send you a hug. Thank you. Um, so yeah, let's talk about citizenship. So I don't know, how do you feel about it? Well, I don't have it. So uh, so I, I can only think of like hypothetical, right? Right. I mean, wait, you still, you don't have it, but you- no. Did so I, like, much for it. economy. Yeah, I like misplaced it. No, I, I, no, I've never. I, I, I mean, I am a citizen, but not of this country. I have a right, right. Yeah, you're uh, not in. Yeah, what country? No, I'm if still. You know. Um, what if I wanted to keep it private? What country? It's like I can't. I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not allowed to say. I'm actually not allowed because to it say. Does, it actually doesn't. No, I'm a, I'm a Salvadorian citizen. Uh. And I've I been knew here. that, but you knew that part. Right? You were asking for the public, um, uh, like a good host. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you're like, uh, what's just you and me, Lorelai? You know where I'm from. But Lorelai, why are we talking through? Why don't you just call me? Why are we on this thing? Yeah, why do you have to? Yeah, oh. Lorelai, you won't answer the phone. Why do you need to talk? Why to are me? we? Why does I'm everything? I'm like, Julio, what is your last name? Um. But I, I've been here for like 10 years or a little over 10 years. So it's like, I feel like not being here and like not being a citizen here, it almost feels like like you're a ghost and they still have given you a body. Yeah. So you can see everything. 
you can like see everything around you and like people can what see it, you. What but, does it look like or like or like I don't know, what what is your perception of like like maybe what's something visual maybe we can add on that like a landscape maybe that citizenship or the the ideas around becoming a citizen or like trying to trying to reach that goal like does it give you any kind of landscape uh it gives me it definitely mind? gives me like uh like when i think about like becoming a citizen i think it feels like a vip tent okay where they're, where they're like oh do you not have the you don't have you you have it and you're like no not like so they don't let you in <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so let's make that. I think that's like really funny. So we're gonna put this. That's what it feels like where they're like, you're like hanging out with your friends, and all your friends are like, "Well, you don't have you don't have global entry. Why are you waiting in that line? <laughs> Who? Where are you going? Where? Oh, you don't okay. have glo those are really shitty. You know, <laughs> those are really shitty friends, and also that's happened to me before. Yeah. Um, I it was a Art Basel. It was oh like God. early 2000s. Those are your people. Yeah, those are my people. I go there. I'm like a poor ass. I'm a poor ass bitch. I go there. Everyone can. Now smell you need global me. entry to enter Miami. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you don't need global entry. Uh huh. <laughs> but anyway, so my friends take my friend and her friends, her rich friends, take me to this uh, party. And we're yeah. at this party and they let everyone in and they stop me. They stop me. And I was like, what? And they're, and then they all just go in and I had this like stare off with my friend of like, are you really, are you really gonna go in there without yeah, me? Like you know, I, I truly forgot what happened. Maybe I blocked it out. I feel like I remember sitting on the ground outside for a while. So, so I think wait, that's so what after I not being able to go to this thing, you were just like, oh, I'm just gonna stay like on this bitch outside of the party. Yeah, I mean, I had no money you just at were, like, the time. On the ground in front, like. Bump. Yeah, I was like, blomp. <laughs> I was like, maybe somebody will party. feel like sorry enough for me to like let me in. And you were ready but for nobody... the party. You had like the hair extensions and like the. Yeah, the I had I. I had the thong. You had like the thong all the way up to here, but they wouldn't let you into the party. Yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, I'm gonna do VIP. Glo global VIP. Global VIP. And this person's pissed. Yeah. Cause they're like, I've been paying taxes here for 10 years. How come I don't have a pass yet? <laughs> Who's like running the global VIP room? Like who's in the front? I mean, it changes, right? It's like, it's like whomever, whomever's president. I don't want to draw him. <laughs> who, Mr. Trump? Oh, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't want to draw him. But he, I feel like... he wrote the art of the deal. He, Mr. Trump is. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Trump knows what he's doing. He wrote the art of the Get deal. The He's gonna take, you know, he's gonna take this clip. This is gonna live on YouTube. Julio, <laughs> he's gonna take this clip. That, that's what gets it. me citizenship. That's what, like, this clip is what gets me citizenship. He's like, you know, very, very, very smart young man, Julio, like said some yeah. very, very nice things about me. And then I find out that you're actually like a, like really shitty, like you don't correct him. You're like- No, really I'm hard. just like, I'm just like, go off. Yeah, you're like, do you do you. I'm like, they're just, they're just jealous. They're just, <laughs> Mr. Trump they're just, just jealous, jealous of us. They're just jealous of us. So let's get this big person. Wait, and maybe I, you're at like, seven minutes with me is what, what I, I am reading. Oh God, I'm having too much fun. All right. So All right. Julio, we've got to say goodbye. Thank you so much for giving us seven Bye. minutes. Bye. Bye. That was Julio Torres, everybody. So now we've got a global VIP room. We have an angry person with lungs as hair. And let's add on some random shit, maybe even some colors, bringing up our next guest. Another SNL. Another SNL lineup. What the fuck is going on here? Amazing. 
Um, so talented, so funny, host Las Culturistas, um, co-host Las Culturistas, um, is so, so funny, so great. I'm a big fan. Please give it up for Bowen Yang. Wow. Bowen! Now the best place to work in the world. <laughs> in the world. You know, but to other know. people, it does sound like really wow. Like to like my little plant here is like the whole time has been like, are they really on SNL? And I'm like, yeah, they are. They are. And your but your plant is protecting you, but is asking you a lot of questions. It's like a if you have like a bodyguard who's like really curious about your life. Yeah, it's kind of like using me a bit. It's a little anyway, bit. Anyway, citizenship. Let's get to it. Yeah. What what about it? What's your relationship or point of view about citizenship? Maybe even could be dark. Could be whatever, it, whatever you think. It's a little dark, I guess. We, my parents moved. My parents and I moved from Canada when I when it was like 1999 to America, and we moved to Colorado. Mm -hmm. And right after two things happened in Colorado, which was Columbine and JonBenet Ramsey. Ooh, baby! So my parents were like, "We're moving to this place," and I was like, "But that's where all the people get." like get killed. And so oh. I, I remember, so this is, is this too dark? But I no, remember- this is, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm you? absolutely coming. coming. Well, it, it's, it's kind of funny because one day at school, my mom was late to pick me up. This is like the second week of fourth grade. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was my first, you know, second week of school in America. And my mom was late to pick me up. And so I was just in like the after school classroom sobbing because I was and I was telling everyone that my mom had been shot that my mom was definitely oh. had de I was like my mom's definitely dead she's definitely dead oh my god so and then like it was fine <laughs> but the poor teacher had to be like what is this kid talking about like she didn't know if if she should believe me or not but then so I embarrassed like my mom I think and myself but then the like but then it has a happy ending where like I helped my parents study for their naturalization um so <laughs> after it, after killing them in front of millions of children in front of lying to millions of children in this in the world and saying that my mom had been brutalized oh my god um, so how did you when your parents came to pick you up from school like how did I that think, i think my mom was like she saw me like hysterical and was trying to like comfort me while also like and the teacher was like Oh my God, like he made it seem like you were, you were not okay or something. And she was probably really confused, but then she understood what happened and then had to like apologize profusely. Oh um, but then I also remember like the, 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 the nice thing about um, the citizenship experience for me was like, like, you know, my parents had very good, were very lucky and like they had very good people helping them through the process. Mm -hmm. um and not everyone you know not everyone has that but like there's you know there's stuff like the american economy that like facilitates like the process for people which i think is nice so i think so, what needs to go, i think what needs to go in this is something like like a, a happy helpful, like a good person yeah like a good person who wants to help so let's make this good person let's see if i okay so let's make this good person that's trying to help Let's put them over here. Maybe they've got really long legs. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Maybe they've got like, do they have hair? What do you think? What kind of hair should they I have? I think our, our like immigration person was this woman who had like, um, like, a, like a pixie cut. Okay. What and color was her hair? She had like dark brown hair. I forget what her name was, but she was very, I remember her, I was like a kid. I remember her being very nice. She helped us get um, she helped us get our green cards, and she was um, you know we were just this like lower middle class immigrant family, and she was and like you know the parents can speak English that well, but she was like super peppy, super like pumped to like help us out, um, and. Yeah, this, I think you're capturing her her whole vibe. That's good. Okay, yeah, keep talking about her. I'm kind of like channeling. Yeah. Okay. Good. So she like I, she wore like a tan pantsuit. I don't think I don't think this person has to wear that. 
but she wore I'm giving like, her a green card. That's good. She wore like a tan pantsuit, mm -hmm. um, and outside, like whatever center, she like had like a bunch of folders. There's so much paperwork that goes into this. Okay, so let's. We need. I think that's something we really need. Paperwork. Now that you're saying that we need some paperwork everywhere. We need a lot of paperwork. So um, some paperwork. Yeah, but well, that's good. Well, it seems like the. It seems like it seems like our our long hair person is like yeah like. Oh yes, they're like, they're like fuck this paperwork. I yeah. can't get in. I'm doing all this work. Exactly. It's 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 it is like a way to like make the process harder, and it's not necessary. It's not totally necessary. Some of it is, but most of it isn't. What kind of paperwork has what to be it? done? I oh gosh, I couldn't begin. I feel to like it's like it. never done. It's never done. It's there's even when you like go to the DMV in New York, it's like so confusing for anybody. And so imagine that times like a million. Um, and I, I, I could tell my parents were very like stressed out and confused by it. But the, but the people who helped us, like this, like this woman is, um, I, I don't know if she was like technically a lawyer, um, but she, she was just like super kind, I remember. And then I remember after college, I drove, um, I was like staying with my parents. I didn't really have that much going on. And so after college, I was in Colorado and then this family that was visiting from China that like went to school with um, my mom or something like came and they like had a kid and they were super sweet and they were like, they're thinking about maybe like immigrating over here. And so my mom like arranged a meeting with this immigration attorney downtown in Denver. And then I, I had the car. I was like, my parents were at work. So I drove this family to this immigration lawyer and then it was just kind of like really really weird to like have this immigration attorney who was much more like to the point than this than this pantsuit lady but like she was like was like a oh. mean version it was a mean she was a mean version of that where she was like look it's it's really hard. like you don't have it you don't have a hope and like there's no there's no point in trying to pursue this and then like watching oh my god it was like you know it was just it was just kind of it was kind of sad so anyway this is all to say that it's such a demoralizing process but the people who want to become citizens want to become it want to become them really really badly for really really beautiful reasons you know oh, I'm, at, I'm at 10 minutes oh my goodness oh well i could hear you talk forever Bowen. I, I brought the mood down lorelei i brought warmy I, I brought the no i so that's that's the the whole vibe is your vibe you know uh, yeah. i was i was so i started out a little bit too over okay we're gonna do 20 minutes with bowen <laughs> uh, so i started out really over the top because you know someone's got to bring the energy so that everyone else I can love bring it. It down you, you know perfect. i don't really have this energy so we would like to thank you for being here, Bowen, and thank contributing. You. you contributed so much. This Look is paper. makes so much more sense. Um, um, this is beautiful, Lorelai. Thank you. Bye, Bowen. Love bye. you. Bye. And now it's just you and I. Okay, so in the comments, I hope you're giving money to New American Economy. Please let us know what you're thinking how much you've donated we'll give you a shout out so i think that what we're missing here right now is a little bit of detail and maybe a slogan because this is going to be a shirt maybe maybe there's a saying that's on top of the shirt so that when you wear it out you can be like yeah this is about whatever blah 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 let us know um you have to somebody says you have to write a thesis to become an american yes so true should should that be part of this t-shirt? Do we take a part of that? Charlie, what do you think? I'm gonna give it over to, Charlie says, can we highlight that? Maybe Coconut had a hard life before they met the octopus teacher and has a lot of trauma. Okay, so obviously I've been missing a whole thing that's been going on. Um, so we're gonna focus on that and we're gonna put an octopus, I guess, in the background. So I think that in the background of this thing,
So I'm gonna do a little bit of highlight on this face. So we're gonna close up on in, in this face. So back at the Art is Easy um, headquarters, which is just my home, um, we like to we like to think that art is easy and art is a tool of manifestation that a lot of art markets, that the art market doesn't want you to know because when you can picture something and you draw it down or you write it down or you, you somehow take it out of your brain that kind of puts it out into the world. So right now we are manifesting together helpful people that help us gain citizenship that help us become citizens that are always there maybe in the background maybe hiding um so what else do we want to put in this picture what else do we want to put in our t-shirt that we're going to walk around with what is the slogan what is the saying what is the vibe we're here for you i think that's beautiful coconut's backstory is so intense Egg person needs even more contouring. Yes, we know. But look, I've only got an hour and I've got to talk. So let me let me appease the masses, which is going to require silence. And we're going to make this. One of my favorite things is to make the most stupidest thing. Treat it like if it's a portrait. So we're going to go on in and start adding some layers of color. So we could turn this very helpful woman into a reality. You know, I really do, one thing I do miss about, you know, real life and not being scared to go outside is meeting good people, you know, the helpers. Meeting people who, who wanna help out, um, and, and thinking about what Bowen said of like, sometimes there's very unhelpful people that just make you feel like giving up. I feel like, you know, that doesn't have to happen most of the time. I had a weird Airbnb thing happen today where my Airbnb person um, tried to diminish my feelings about how unsafe I felt at the apartment. And, I, and I, I got very angry because there's nothing that makes me angrier than somebody um, diminishing somebody else's experience and comparing it to others. Um, because every person is an individual, you know? So that really resonated with me. And I've just been thinking about compassion a lot lately of like, really you could bump into anybody well, okay, first of all, nobody knows why we're here on Earth. Nobody's got any of the answers, no matter how successful you are, no matter how much money you have, no matter anything. Yet, everybody's certain that they're right about it, about everything, which is very stupid. So sometimes you meet someone who's like, oh, that's a really stupid way of thinking, and they'll put you down only to put themselves up, you know? So, and I feel like that's so much, so much a part of our culture American culture right now is about um, putting people who you think are less, who you, putting people down because people are putting you down. And it's like this really horrible chain of oppression that we're living in that needs to stop. It just needs to totally end. Cause it's like, if we are nice to each other, well, that'll just fix everything, you know? Pog champ, mon dieu. Okay, Clementine, you guys are talking about coconut shrimp. I want you to park that big octopus bike in this little nautical garage. All right, so I'm going to put all this together. We're gonna make it a little smaller so that we can fit some text in here about citizenship because we do want to start to wrap this up and then I will, oops start adding some detail. <laughs> we just have our angry person. 
I mean, this could all also end up all being like, you know, an idea too. Like this could be like a thought bubble that's like in this angry person's mind, you know? So let's do that. Cause I, I kind of like the idea. It gives us a little bit of space to play. So maybe we do this. Could be like the angry person is, where are they? So the angry person is here. We gotta detail them as well. And then we have our thought bubble. Could be like, they're so fucking angry thinking about all the shit they have to do to become a citizen. They're like, God damn it, this is so fucking sucks. This is so fuck. do you like that? This is how, this is what language has turned into for me during this time. This is so fucking sucks. So I'm going to start deleting just out of here, just to put everything in the thought bubble. For artistic um, uh, integrity, we're gonna leave the you know, leave little bits of the drawing behind, so it looks like an artistic choice. Like, wow, that's very creative. Yada yada yada. We're going to blend things in over here so that it doesn't look like total shit. Um, what's great about, you know, art making is that most of the time if you can just get an idea across, that's enough to make somebody imagine something they've never even thought of before. And I think that's amazing. Okay, so we have them fucking angry, and now we want to add to the text. So I'm going to go back to you guys and see what's up. Take care of each other. Save some for us. I like take care of each other. So maybe like citizens take care of each other. Maybe like an announcement. So when you're walking down the street, somebody's reading your shirt, and they're like, <gasps> They're, they feel so bad. They're like, oh my god! What have I been doing this whole time? <gasps> I haven't been taking care. They get really emotional and you're just, you're just trying to like get out of the way really fast and they, took, they take their mask off and they're like, oh my god! And you're like, I can't talk right now. And they're like, oh my god! And you're like, I really, you're spitting in my face. Don't talk to me right now. Take care of each other, all right, here we go. We're gonna write, take care. So let's see, maybe this has to be a little smaller. Ooh, that's perfect. Okay. Some sizing stuff, you know. Maybe that, maybe we can do, maybe what color? Hmm. A blue, ooh, a yellow, an orangey. Mm. No, maybe it's like a cool color. These are all the choices that go into art making. Very little. Maybe take care, take care of each other. Los pueblos del camino 
Take care of each other. A little close up of our angry little person. And maybe we want to. What else do we want? The octopus has so many babies. <laughs> Octopus's children. Once had dirty water come out for a bath at an Airbnb. It was really stressful. It is very stressful staying in like other people's homes and then it not being good. Okay. So this seems like we're at the end Let's see how much all right so we're at the end so here we we have the design this will be the shirt that you guys get take care of each other. And we're gonna quickly summarize what's going on here. So here there is a global VIP tent on top of a landscape of coral reef. There's a very helpful person in the background trying to give you your green card, but you're so fucking angry because of all the paperwork you can't see well. Zoom out, pan out. Here we are actually in a void in the middle of nowhere, screaming at ourselves, screaming at each other, screaming at the people around us. Take care of each other because we know that when we do take care of each other, everything turns out okay. When we do it from a place of compassion and love and care, everything is great. And on the other end, I think you guys have made up, um, <laughs> oh look, a whole, a whole, a whole universe that's separate from the what we've made here today. Um, thank you so much everybody for being here today. Thank you so much Charlie for being in the chat. Thank you so much Galama and Josefina for making the playlist um, that you can see in the band camp. We're gonna link, if you like to the playlist, you can listen to it there, more of their work over there. Thank you, Bowen. Thank you, Julio. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, New American Economy for allowing me to be a part of this project. Thank you. <laughs> we, okay, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna write really fast. Thank you. I'm gonna keep saying thank you, Charlie, so keep going. Um, thank you to Abrams Art Center for asking us to do this. Thank you to the community who's come by. Um, this really was created during quarantine as a way to connect with you all. And it's gotten me through some of the hardest times. And I'm so happy that we can give this back and uh, contribute to new American economy, that we can contribute to taking care of each other in the future and for whoever's heard this and is getting a message of knowing that we support you if you're on your path to citizenship or if you're not, if you're here and you're scared about what's going on, I just wanna say that we're scared too. This is a crazy time, but don't worry because we're all here for each other and the helpers, are out there now and let's just blow up really big on screen oh yeah to purchase a t-shirt please email that email i'm all over the place charlie um says so let's highlight what's charlie saying this will be the goodbyes we oui, we oui, the french merson which means yes yes the french person cut a slice of freshly baked baguette and passed it to three octopus teacher man who is five years older now four father of 1000 children <laughs> Is there a five? <laughs> more people, more party. Great. 
Um, so everybody, please make sure, keep being nice to each other, keep being compassionate, keep being you, keep being supportive, keep making, keep dreaming, keep thinking, and coconut. And at the, we're gonna end this with coconut. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.